Welcome everyone to Moonrise Gallery. I also heard this evening that Google Maps says we're permanently closed. We are not. <laughs> we are open for business. And this evening, we welcome Grace Gard with her wonderful landscapes and animals. And we welcome all of you to hear Grace talk about her work. And Grace, you want to come up here so sure. everyone sees who you are right sure, here? Sure, sure, sure. This is Grace. And, and one thing I do want to say, well, <laughs> one thing, Grace's show is opening this evening. But hers is the first show that actually, she sold a piece yesterday, a piece of hers <laughs> sold yesterday when the gallery was closed. <laughs> and someone actually came in and already bought a piece. So she's the first show to open that is selling before she opens. <laughs> so, Grace, I turn it over to you, and you can yes. introduce yourself, and please tell us about your wonderful work. Yeah, so, as she said, my name is Grace Gard, um, and I won't try to talk too long, but um, just give you a little background on me. I grew up in Omaha, um, I always enjoyed doing artwork as a kid and, you know, I was always drawing horses and things like that and it definitely developed over time um, and I know a lot of people as I was growing up were like, aren't you going to go to school for art? And I was kind of like, I loved nature so much and my high school friends would make fun of me for how much I love nature, you know, it's an inside joke. So it's funny because I just decided to go more that route and I have an undergrad in fisheries and wildlife. And then um, I just recently got a graduate degree with like teaching biological sciences. Um, and so over time I've been at camps and um, taught at Fauna Forest, leading a lot of hiking and student education field trips. And now I work for Nebraska Game and Parks as an outdoor educator, outdoor education specialist. Um, and so it's really hard to kind of, the more I've grown into my art, the more I've, you know, tried to incorporate that scientific side that I do for work and trying to educate people, but then also inspire them and get them connected to the outdoors because that is definitely my passion. Um, and so I chose the title Paying Attention just because I feel like that's what I would always try to get people to do when I would take them outside. Katie knows, she'd, I'd, we'd be on hikes and I would find like tiny bones on the trail. <laughs> just things that she'd be like, how did you see that? And so I always just try to really notice the details and I think that that is something I practiced through my artwork and then it's, it's really kind of developed. Um, and I just have a quote to share with it because um, I, Amber shared this quote, and I was like, that's perfect, because that's what I was thinking when I said paying attention. If any of you are familiar with Robin Wall Kimmerer's book, Braiding Sweetgrass, mm -hmm. highly recommend it if you haven't read it, but there's a quote from her book that says, paying attention is a form of reciprocity with the living world, receiving the gifts with open eyes and open heart. And I feel like that really encompasses what I try to inspire people with, with my art, and just keeping your eyes open and being amazed by you know, big scenery, but also tiny details, small insects on the trail. Um, and so that's that's kind of where my artwork's coming from. There was one piece that yeah, I just- Can you speak to Yeah, I'll speak to a couple art. of the pieces. Yeah, so um, this painted turtle over here, really fast, just um, every year we do kind of an expo where we get kids to interact in different stations with nature. One of those stations, we just have like a ton of turtles, frogs, fish, the kids get to like touch them. and. Um, every year these turtles have really detailed, unique patterns on their shells. And this was a turtle that I saw back in May and I really liked the shell pattern on it. So that's kind of the story behind that. Um, I did used to work at Fontenelle Forest and lead like mm -hmm. canoeing on the Great Marsh. And so that was a picture that um, one of my friends took when we were on the marsh at sunrise. And um, I really enjoyed leading that and getting people connected to the marsh that way. Um, and then this piece was a, a really big one that Barbie and I had talked about a lot. Um, so this is actually a view from the Mopac Trail. I live pretty close to the Mopac Trail, kind of outside of Lincoln now. Um, and it's literally the spot that I always stop and I take pictures of it at all times of day, different clouds, um, different times with light. My husband's shaking his head because he's always like, okay, can we keep on going on the walk? Um, and so I'm always lagging behind photographing this. And recently, in the last couple months, 
the last time I went out there, um, there's a giant bulldoze path through it. Okay. And I was just like totally rocked by it, honestly. I went to work the next day and I was kind of like crying at work about it. I was that upset. Um, because, you know, we, we, not everyone in our society places value on those sorts of things. And so, um, they, so yeah, they've been kind of doing some work, but then recently we found out these 90 houses or whatever they're going to oh, put no. in are like too expensive. So now they're oh. stopped at the moment. So it's just like a roller coaster of, you know, processing losing land that you really love. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I hope to just raise awareness for more in the future with my artwork and help people appreciate things that are often underappreciated and don't have a voice. So um, I hope to kind of give voices to nature and different species and I like that one up there, Grace. Yeah, this last big one, that one is actually from Colorado. Most of the stuff in here is Nebraska based. Um, but I did work at a camp out in Colorado and after about a month, a forest fire started. Um, and so we got sent out down the mountain and so I took a picture of that down the mountain a bit getting smokier and it was kind of scary for a little while, you know, with, and we see a lot of that still today. And so that's kind of stuff I'm trying to capture more of and, and work work the science and the education and the art all together. Well, those of us that burn love to see a burned landscape. Yes. <laughs> yes, and there are some very cool ones in Nebraska. There's a lot of people in this room that I know do a lot of crystal yeah. burning, too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that one was less intentional. Okay, that one. Down here? Yes. Yeah, um, this was also another piece uh, that um, Megan actually was like, maybe you should include the, the sampling that you did with the marker because um, I was trying to decide what colors to use throughout the piece. So this is just a picture I took when I was kayaking with some students on Holmes Lake up close of some pond weed. And um, I just really like those small details that are out there as well and all, all the colors. I love greens and as you can tell, a lot of earthy. But on that one, I, I think it's really um, important for people every now and then to see the beginning part of what an artist mm -hmm. does. And those that are artists in the room um, will be able to identify with that, which is why I really like that, because it's yeah. not just the painting, it's the process. It's mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. And I think that yes. speaks a lot. Yeah. So, so any, any speak anything else of your other ones? You have some oh. lovely, I love your small ones. They're all great. Yeah, I really like doing small artwork as well because I like to keep things accessible to anybody that is interested in art. I don't ever like to put things at crazy prices, you know. And I like, again, it's the small details. You can really capture those in small pictures. So um, there's, there, most of them are based on pictures I've just taken right outside my house or up at Ponca State Park, some other place I've, I've gone a lot. Um, just capturing like clouds in June and the, you know, I've tried to plant a lot of natives in my yard, but they yeah. came to my house yeah. before coming to the door. She was out yeah, there I in, was the in the yard <laughs> <laughs> looking and out checking out. what I had planted. And so, yeah, I like to capture those kinds of things. Yeah. I think you really can integrate them into your space, no matter how small or big it is. And you're not just outside of Lincoln. You're in Eagle. Yes. Yes. I yes. Mean, I and Eagle, I think Nebraska. that's important to say. Eat not outside of Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> Eagle, Nebraska has the greatest FM towers. <laughs> they just do. I mean, I you know I have photographed those in the past, yep. and so Eagle is very. They have important really place. nice rolling hills. They do. You do. So yeah. you're not. You know, I wouldn't associate with Lincoln. I would say <laughs> Eagle. Yeah. You know. I would also like to say that. Um, uh, We've commissioned Grace to do field guides at Glacier Creek Preserve. And so she will be starting, um, the first field guide will be with the garden area and everything right around the barn. So I'm very excited. Yeah, very excited also. Yes, to, to have Grace. Yeah, um, the more that I have grown, like I was at one point doing a lot of commission work and I really turned to more of combining what I love. Right. And so I appreciate Barbie a lot because you're giving me a good chance to expand on that and also use it for that education side. Which yes, I think is really so important. you will so. you will be great. And yeah. so does anyone have any questions for Grace? Just make make the ship up. There's <laughs> <laughs> we have one question. Yeah, it's a technical question. Yes. So I've recently switched from oil to acrylic. Um, maintaining my same style of painting, but I like I could do this kind of detail in oil. I have no clue how to do it in acrylic. We, I was just talking also about oil and 
how I was like scared that the oil doesn't ever dry, you know, when I was in high school. So I haven't messed with it. I, I, I recently started buying Golden brand yeah. acrylics, and I feel like they stay wet a little longer, which is helpful. But yeah, I've never noticed anything too different or high viscosity. Yeah. Yeah. They and it comes with some sort of liquid, but I've never messed with it because I. So you don't I'm not trained artist. I just like <laughs> use what's out there. You don't have to make your paint like super thin to get that kind of detail. Um, not usually. Or I mix water with it. That's pretty much yeah. it. So <laughs> water will break down the chemical. <laughs> See, mm -hmm. I don't know these things. <laughs> There's always 
an unexpected high interest in those things. For sure. So mm -hmm. and art and math. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 My, so, my so husband is a math teacher. So yes. <laughs> Grace's husband. Yes. This is Alec. He loves being the center of attention. No artistic. No, I know. Yes. But he teaches math in Tony. Yes. Which is also a totally yes. different challenge. He does. He teaches math. Yeah. Which is great. That yeah. makes the world go round. Yes. Okay. Anything else? I have a question. Oh, yeah. Grace. Yeah. The, yes, there is one departure. In there, fiber. there is one unique piece over here as well um, that is like painting with wool, kind of. So I recently did take a workshop online from someone I had been following on Instagram. I was like fascinated by how detailed of images she could make with wool, um, and so and I even kind of brought it to my mom, and we played around with you know wool and then wool fibers that you poke in and create an image with. So that's what that bison is. And, so I hope to do more, it's just like having time to do all the different kinds of mediums can be tough, so, <laughs> yeah. Just a comment, if you really have an ability to make these landscapes pop, mm -hmm. yeah. for someone who grew up in eastern Nebraska and kind of take it for granted, then to see this, it's like, I've never seen that like that before, it's really great. Yeah. Thank you, I, that is so great to you. This is Ernie Steinhauer, it's Jerry's brother. Really? Oh, you're Jerry's brother, nice to meet you. Jerry, his brother is a biologist, a botanist at Game of Hearts, basically our state botanist. So that's a huge compliment. <laughs> well, I appreciate that a lot because, you know, growing up in Nebraska, people just tend to hate on it, and um, I think there's a lot of beauty here. You just have to open your eyes.